Appreciate everyone that is uh, is watching. Appreciate everyone that, uh, that's attentive to this service tonight. Appreciate everyone. Appreciate your prayers. Uh, God's going to get us through this trying time that we're in across this nation, across this world. God's going to help us that we can continue on and we can reach lost souls even through these trying times that people's lives will be changed. Get your Bibles tonight, Job chapter 1. Let the Lord breathe this message into me this week. And I just came tonight to encourage you, each and every one, that hears this message. Job chapter 1, beginning in verse 13. Job chapter 1, beginning in verse 13. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine, in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job, and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans fell upon them, and took them away. Yet they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven, and hath burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, fell upon the camels, and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only have escaped along to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house. It fell upon the young men, and they were dead. And I only have escaped along to tell thee. Then Job arose, Read his mantle and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground and worshipped, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight, thank you and praise you, magnifying your holy name. Thank you for one more time allowing us to be behind your sacred desk, Lord, and giving out your message. Lord, I love you tonight. Just ask you to reach down and touch every life, touch every heart, stir every mind, stir every heart. Uh, Lord, I know every ear to hear, and know every heart to receive. God, move in a mighty way. Touch every life. Every person under the sound of this voice tonight, God, move in a mighty way. Lord, the message and the message one more time. Move in a mighty way in people's lives and souls and help us to continue to do your will. We love you and we praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The title of this tonight, When All of Hell is Against You. When All of Hell is Against You. We see that, and through this scripture, and we all have heard Job many times be preached, we've heard the book of Job, we've read it uh, many times, and as we look at this, we see that Satan, he was going to and fro in all the earth, just trying to find someone that he could devour, someone that he could harm, someone that he could go against. And there, there came a time, uh, if you read verse 6, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And he came, <clears throat> and Satan came before God, came before the Lord, and said, uh, and began to be there. And, and God uh, began to think about Job. God began to think about all the, uh, the, the righteousness and the, the uprightness of Job. Began to think about how Job lived and how he did that was right in God's eyes and how Job was perfect and upright in, in his eyes and how, how he had blessed Job. God began to recollect and begin to think about all the blessings he bestowed upon Job because Job was a, was a good man and did what uh, God wanted and he had a relationship with God and God could count on him. And so he brings up the uh, uh, he brings up the, uh, the the message or brings up the idea. Says if you consider my servant Job, he's one that uh, he's one that's perfect and upright. He shoes evil, and and Satan uh, began to tell God, "Well, you've got a hedge around him. This is paraphrase. You've got a hedge around him, and because of that hedge, no one can touch him, or no one can do anything to him, or or, or harm him in any manner." And God said, "Well." I'll tell you what, you can, you can uh, uh, touch everything, but don't touch him. Don't, don't touch his, his body, don't touch his life. And, and so Satan went out. He had a plan in motion. He had an idea in motion. He had an idea that he was going to <clears throat> destroy Job and destroy what and who Job represented. And as we look at, at Job, we, we see how blessed he was. He had, he had a, lot of, uh, a lot of family. He had seven sons and three daughters. He had ten children that God had blessed Job with. And God had ministered in his life, and God had helped him, and God had ministered to him by giving him these children that Job loved, and Job cared about him, and Job would go to God.
God for. He would offer offerings and burnt offerings for his children because he loved them and he knew there would come a day where they would need the help from God. And so Job went to God for his children. He was blessed uh, by God with them. But we also look at some things that he had. He had, he had 7,000 sheep, and that's a, that's a lot of sheep. But as we look, we understand 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen, and he had 500 uh, 500 she asses or donkeys and we understand that and we look and it says he was the greatest man in all the east. He was great. Everyone knew who Job was. Everyone understood that Job had a lot of possessions. Job had a lot of things. Job had, a, had, had been blessed and Job had, had, had been ministered to by God. Job had been, uh, uh, been, been someone that God could count on so God gave him richly and, and blessed him. But there came a time uh, now that we see in this scripture and this story that Satan has a plan that he's going to uh, try to demise God and try to go against God. He's going to try his best to get Job to give in and to give up. And so we look at Satan himself and all of hell following Satan was against Job that day and in that moment, in that time. All of hell was against him. And I tell it to you, I begin to think about the, the world today and I begin to think about the church today. I begin to think about how the devil, Satan, and all of hell is against the church of this world, against the church of God, not the church of God, the organization of the church that God is coming back for, the church that, that is going up the bride of Christ. That's what I'm referring to. I want you to understand that, uh, that Satan is out uh, going through this earth to and fro seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for someone that's a Christian to give up. He's looking for someone that's a saint of God to give in and throw the towel in and say, I'm done. I'm through with God because of scenarios and situations. But let me tell you tonight, we don't have to give up. We don't have to give in. We don't have to throw in the towel. We don't have to, uh, to cast off everything down and say, I'm done. But you know what? We can hold on. Hallelujah. Because hallelujah, when all of hell comes against you, you have one greater than hell that stands with you. His name is God, Jehovah. Hallelujah. If God be for you, who can be against you? God is there reaching down and touching tonight across this land and across this nation. It might look dreary. It might look, uh, it might look uh, bad on the outside. But let me tell you, God is still looking after his people. God is still looking after those that will, that will come to him. And I, I look at this scripture. I look at this story. And I begin to think about it in three fashions. And, and I want to, to offer you these three points tonight that I begin to look at. First of all, to understand that, that God, excuse me, that Satan does not want you to be blessed by God. Satan does not want you to be blessed by God. We look at this. We see all that Job had. We see all of uh, all of his uh, children and we see all of his animals. But his, his, his blessings uh, was all these things. But in, but in the physical possessions was his animals. And so he used his animals. That would be part of the uh, day. He could go out there if he needed one for an offering. He could go out there if he needed one for a meal for a banquet. But he also had those he could use them to, to sell or to barter. And so as we look at all the uh, this many camels and, and donkeys and, and, and yokes of oxen and, and we look at all this and we see God had richly blessed him and you see Satan didn't like that because we understand that's the first point uh, that we see in here that, that Satan goes and affects the, the possessions and affects what God had blessed him with, how God had blessed him with so many animals and so many things that, that would help him and would be a blessing uh, that's what that's the first thing that the enemy Satan began to go after he and God lifted his hand back and Satan said I'm going to have a field day. I'm going to get Job to give in, but let me tell you, Job still didn't give in. Hallelujah. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I get excited because I read the back of the book. I read the, 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 the last chapter of Job. I read all this, but as we look tonight and we see Job's in the midst of this trouble, he's there and he understands his children are, are at a picture with the eldest son and they're eating and drinking and, and they're there and they're, they're together as family, but uh, then a uh, servant comes and begins to talk to him and begins to uh, tell him the problems and begins to tell him about, about what go, goes on. He said, verse 14, says that there came a master unto Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the asses beating beside them and the civilians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants of the edge of the sword, and I only have escaped along to tell thee. You see, these people came in, and they took what was rightfully Job's, what was rightfully Job's possession that God had blessed him with. The civilians came in and came upon and slew all the servants, all the ones that worked for Job, began to kill them, and took and stole all that, uh, all these animals and these ones, these oxen and these donkeys, began to, uh, began to steal them and take them away to uses that was theirs, to uses their own property, which were, that were 
were not their property. They were Job's property given by God. While he was yet speaking, verse 16, there came also another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and all them escaped along to tell thee. Then we, and then we go again. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The child is made out of three bands, fell upon the camels that carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and all them escaped along to tell thee. We understand, and, and we look at this, and, and we see that the, uh, uh, that the camels were taken away by the child in. But if you'll notice, the sheep, they were burned up with the servants. A fire came from out of, out of heaven, and so the sheep were burned up, and all these others were stolen away, and all these others were, were taken and were, were, were taken to be their property. God had blessed them. God had, had been blessed Job and his family with all his blessings, and that's what the enemy wanted. Wanted to take the possession. Wanted to take what they had, their blessings, their miracles that God had given them. Wanted to take them away and wanted so that Job would give in and give up. But let me tell you tonight, that's exactly many times what Satan and all of hell will come against us at. He'll begin to try to take our, our blessings that God has given us, whether it be a physical blessing, whether it be a spiritual blessing, whether it be a blessing such as salvation for our family, whether it be sanctification for our people, uh, to serve God, to be set apart, to live holy and pleasing unto God, or, or maybe or maybe it's uh, what God, how God's blessed and this in our lives to help us to have a testimony and have a witness for God. Many times, God, uh, the enemy, Satan, wants to take that away, those blessings, those things that God has given us. He wants to take away, but you know what? He can take everything uh, that, that I have on the outside as far as cars and houses and all those things, but yet I can still serve God just like Job did. Hallelujah. He can take all the animals and all the livestock and all the money that might be in the bank of each and every one of us. It don't matter how big your bank account is or how little. If you've got God, hallelujah, you've got it all, church. You've got everything you need. Let me tell you, the enemy is coming to too far and too late to tell me that I'm going to throw in my towel and I'm going to give up because he takes away something that God has given me because you know what? If God gave one time, he'll give another time. Hallelujah. Whatever blessing that God has given you, don't let the enemy take it. Don't let the enemy have it. You hold on to it. Hallelujah. But if he does get it, hold on because God's got another blessing. God's got another miracle for you. Just hold on to God. Don't give up. Don't give in. Hallelujah. God has some more donkeys and some more camels and some more oxen. Hallelujah. And some more sheep to give Job. And he's got some more blessings to give you and I. He's got some more miracles to pass down from the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Our God can open the windows of heaven and pour all those blessings on us. So don't worry about the, the physical part. Don't worry about the, the, the blessings that maybe the enemy is trying to take away. Or maybe tonight you, you're thinking about the miracles or the blessings that God maybe has taken away. Let me tell you tonight, if you'll stand on God and you'll believe God and His Word, hallelujah, things will get better. Things will begin to work out for the good of those who love God, for God's mercy and God's grace. And as we look at this and we understand, you see, Satan, no, hell doesn't want you to be blessed. He does not want us to have blessed. Because you know what? Satan knows that his days are numbered. Satan, the enemy, knows that his time here, on, uh, here running to and fro is limited. And he's trying his best to take everything that the Christians have, the saints of God have. But let me tell you, hallelujah, he can take everything he wants to take. But he cannot take your soul unless you give it to him. Hallelujah. Because you see, God contains that. If you've given your life to Jesus... Just hold on to Jesus. Just hold on to him. One more time, say, no, devil. I'm going to serve God no matter what comes or what goes. As we look on down, we understand. Now, secondly, uh, the devil and all of hell does not like uh, what represents God. You see, as we look on down, he begins, the enemy begins to fight. He begins to go against the family. That, that's what's taking place here. We understand there's a servant that comes. All the children, the sons and the daughters were at the other son's house. And they were eating and drinking, and, and there was a wind that came from the wilderness and spoke the four quarters of the men back and tell Job. Now he's lost all of his blessings, all of his miracles, all the things that, that God had given him physically, but now it's to the point he's lost his family. You see, when you're loving God and you're serving God, we're part of the family. We're part of the kingdom of God. We're part of God's family. Let me tell you, that's what the enemy does not like. Satan don't like you being a part of God's family because he, he he's just a, a part of a, a, of a family that 
sons and those daughters, Job had went to God for them, prayed for them. And no doubt they saw their dad that was serving God and how he loved God. And so he was bringing them up right, <clears throat> bringing them up in the right fashion, in the right manner. He was bringing them up in the way they should go. And he was doing the right things with them. And you know what? The enemy doesn't like it when we bring our children and those around up in the way they should go. The enemy, Satan, does not like it when we, when we teach our children to pray. Satan doesn't like it when we teach our children to read the Bible. Satan doesn't like it when we teach our children to go to church and to do God's work. Satan don't like it. But let me tell you, hallelujah, as long as you're serving God, hallelujah, and you've got your children uh, that, that, that knows and understands who God is, and you're beginning to bring them and show them the right way and show God is about letting others. Hallelujah, hear the message one more time. God is about family coming together, being together across this land, telling people about the love of Jesus. Hallelujah, because when you're in the family of God, things is going to be all right. Things is going to work out. You, you, you see, hallelujah, I hope that every morning when, when I wake up, I hope and I pray that Satan himself trembles. I think it's different criteria and different, uh, different laws and different beliefs and different this and different that. That's why the family is so important. We've got to be praying for our family culture across this land of, uh, of America and across the world. We need to pray for our families. Hallelujah, that people will hold on and not throw in the towel and not give up. You see, as we look at Job, after he hears about all his blessings uh, of the animals that were gone, and we hear about Job as he's learned of his children uh, being taken. Listen to what he said. He rose up, and yet he read his mantle, shaved his head, and fell upon the ground. And what did he do? He worshiped God. You know, if there ever was a time that it would be hard to worship God, it's when you find out that you've lost everything and your, and your family, your children. That would be a hard time to worship the Job. said, I'm going to worship God. I'm going to praise his holy name. I'm going to lift him up. I'm going to give him honor and glory. That's what Job said. He said, in worship, listen. And said, naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return to them. The Lord gave and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, that's the, that, that, that's the kind of song that we need to sing. Lord. Be discouraged and dismayed and give up. Hallelujah. God will continue to hold us. We've got to be like Job. We've got we to say, you know what? I'm going to still worship and bless his name. Hallelujah. When everything comes around us. When the enemy fights us tooth and nail, when the, when the enemy comes on every corner, we can still say, I'm going to worship you, God. I'm going to praise you and lift your name in honor. Hallelujah. God is so worthy of all praises of his people. God is so worthy yes. of every praise that we can lift. Hallelujah. We can't praise him enough, church. Can't praise him enough for all the things that he does for us, all the miracles and all the blessings that he does in our lives. Can't praise him enough for all that he does within our lives. Hallelujah. And thirdly tonight, I want you to look at this. He doesn't like you to look anything at anything but the physical. doesn't like you to look at anything but the physical. Chapter 2, verse 1 says this. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Here again we see God's asking him to consider Job. Thou considered my servant Job that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. And still he holdeth fast in the chariot, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. He took him a pot shirt to scrape himself with him, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. We understand there come a time where Satan saw Job wasn't going to be broken. Job wasn't going to be discouraged. 
Job wasn't going to throw in the towel. Satan had already took his children and already took his uh, animals, took his livelihood. Job didn't sin. Job continued to serve God and worship God. Then there was another time when Satan had to go before God and, and, and God said again, Have you considered my servant Job? He's perfect enough, right? He's a good man. He shoes evil. He doesn't do wrong. He, he loves me. That's what he was telling Satan. Satan said, well, if you move your hand and touch his body, then he's going to curse you. And God said, you can touch his body, but save his life. In other words, you can touch anything about his body, but do not kill him. Right. And so Satan said, you know what? I got a plan now. I'm going to get him. So he goes to old Job, and he calls his balls to come up upon his flesh. Balls. Big, big balls. And it says that Job got a potsherd or got a piece of pottery to start scraping balls because they itched. No doubt they hurt. They got the itch, those sores. Something that looked awful was not good. Job had already went through all this other torment and now his body is torment. His body is, is, is decaying because he's got these balls and he's got this going on and he's got, uh, he's got this taking place in life. So Satan wanted him to look at his physical condition that I've got all these balls so I need to just throw in the towel because I'm sick and I'm ailing and I have this going on. That's what Satan thought he could do. The enemy, hell, thought they could get Job discouraged. Thought it could, could be discouraged and be dismayed enough to throw in the towel and, and go against God and curse God because of these balls. And as we look at this and we see that as he began to scrape these balls, Job's wife came out and said, you know, why don't you just curse God and die? You, 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 you've got all this going on. You've got all this problem. And Job replied to his wife, thou speakest as one of the foolish women. Right. Job began to think within himself, no doubt. You know, I've lost my children. I've lost my livelihood, my family, all, or my, my, my material wealth. And now my health is failing. But I've still got God. That's what he was thinking, no doubt. He said, I've still got God. My health might be failing, but I've still got a breath in my body. Maybe it was what he was thinking. I've still got an opportunity that I can reach out and share that God loves mankind, that God loves people. God still loves each and every one. Maybe, maybe that's what he was thinking. Maybe he was thinking, I'm in pain and torment, but if I can reach just one more soul and let people know that God is in control of this, everything will be all right. I don't, I, I don't really know what he was thinking. But I can see Job now as he was in this tor torment. And as he was as he was going through this situation and he had to sit in ashes uh, to, to try to get some relief from this pain and from this. But yet he still had his integrity. His integrity meant he was still going to serve God. He was still going to do what God would have him do. He was still God's chosen. He was still God's man. He was still had to live upright and righteous before God. And so the enemy was trying to get him to look at the physical instead of the spiritual. And I tell her to you tonight, I tell her to you tonight, that's what the enemy is trying to do across this land. He's trying to get people to look at the physical instead of the spiritual. He's trying to look, get the world to look at how bad it seems with this virus going around America. He's trying to, uh, and around the world, he's trying to get people to look at what's taking place around our neighborhoods and our communities and in our stores and how bad it looks and how gloomy and doomy it looks. He's trying to get us to look at that more so than look at the power of God in our lives and in our hearts. You see, the enemy wants us to get discouraged. The enemy wants us to give in. The enemy wants us to, to quit thinking with spiritual minds and spiritual, uh, seeing with spiritual eyes, and he wants us to look with physical eyes at the ailments and the things going on. But let me tell you tonight, hallelujah, whatever comes and whatever goes on the physical realm, we can still serve God. We can still live for God. We can still live holy and righteous. No matter what takes place in this world today that we live in, we can still serve God. Hallelujah. It may come a time to where we have to shelter in place. It may come a time to where uh, things get worse before they get better. But let me tell you, God said he would never leave us or forsake us. And I understand tonight that if I begin to think and I begin to feel and I begin to look with the spiritual realm within me, I can still stand up and praise his holy name. I can still serve God. Hallelujah. When the people come around and the naysayers come around 
And those that don't believe in God come around and say, why don't you just quit serving God? Or why don't you just quit uh, doing God's work? Because all this bad stuff is happening. Let me tell you tonight, there's no time to quit. But this is the time for the church to shine. This is the time for the church to hold on. This is the time for the church to give way to fresh beginnings, new beginnings, new way of excitement that God has got for us. Hallelujah. As we're, as we're here at the, the, the time of year of springtime, most of you have probably went and seen outside in, in maybe yards or driveways or porches. You've seen the yellow stuff called pollen that is all over uh, all over things. And you know, I uh, usually in the spring I'm allergic to pollen, and, and sometimes I get the sneezing and coughing. But Lord's blessed me, I haven't had it as bad yet uh, as normally. But we look at that new that pollen, and you know, people get allergies and cough and stuff, and it's not good. But you know what? That spring means, and the pollen means it means new beginnings. It means things are springing up. Things are springing forth. That means new beginnings are happening. And I believe this is the time for the church, uh, uh, the church that's going up, the church that binds together for us to shine in these last days. I believe it's the time for the church to bound up together, kind of lead with wings as eagles and be what God would have us to be and be those lights and those witnesses. Yes, we might have to be delivering messages through uh, through different uh, media stations and different things, but let me tell you, we can reach a lot of people around and tell them that God is still alive. God in charge of this thing. He's got the whole world in his hands and he wants to bless each and every person, each and every body that will turn to him. Hallelujah. The word of God tells us, except a man be born again. Hallelujah. Except to be born again. You cannot, hallelujah, be what God had to be. You cannot be a God's child. you got to be born again. Let me tell you, there's time for new beginnings. Hallelujah. When we look around at the physical, things are bad. Hallelujah. There's no place else to turn but to God. Hallelujah. We can't turn to Satan because he's got tricks up his sleeve. We can't turn to all the imps of hell because they want to discourage us and get us down. But let me tell you, when we turn to God, we can have faith for tomorrow. We can have faith that tomorrow is going to be better. Hallelujah. Uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God. My yesterday is gone. Hallelujah. We've got a bright future, church. All we have to do is hold on, just like Job did. Job held on. And, and, and as we look at this, and we see as his wife told him, uh, said, uh, uh, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. He said to her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaking. What shall we receive good at the hand of God? Shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. We don't have to give in to the temptation of sin in this land. We don't have to give in uh, to the thing because of physical things going on. We don't have to uh, go out here and do things for the enemy and do and allow our lives to let down, allow our souls to let down. Hallelujah. God still requires righteousness and holiness. God, holiness is still God's standard of living. we got to do His work and live for Him. Hallelujah. In these last days, there's no greater time, hallelujah, that the church can shine than in today's time. We can give hope to a lost world. We can share hope to a people that don't know which way to turn or what's going to happen. We can give hope. Just like Job was giving hope to his friends that came around and sat there and watched him, to, to all those, but to his wife. that he told her she spoke to this foolish woman. He was giving her hope that, you know what, even though the physical is bad, even though the blessings have went away, even though it seems like we lost it all, we still can have integrity with God. Still can have integrity and serve Him because He's got outstretched arms, want to help each and every one, each and every person across this land tonight, across this world. He wants to help each and every person. That's why He tells us, going to all the world preaching the gospel, because people need to hear the good news. Hallelujah. If you turn on your news and you turn on the, or look in the newspaper and different things, or turn on media stations, we're hearing a lot of bad news nowadays. We need to hear some good news. People need to hear good news. They don't need to hear negative all the time. They don't need to hear uh, down and, and, and gloomy and doomy all the time. They need to they need to hear something refreshing and something new, some good news. And the good news is Jesus is alive and well. Hallelujah. In just a couple of weeks, we'll celebrate Easter about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He he was crucified and he and he was uh, he was murdered uh, on Calvary's hill and then he uh, was put in a tomb. But hallelujah, he rose again on that third glorious day so that we could have victory today in 2020. He gave his life so we could have victory. Hallelujah. We can still hold on to him. We can still trust in him. Hallelujah, we don't have to give up. We don't have to give in. When all of hell is against us, we can still
still be blessed by God. Amen. Amen. We can still represent God in our lives. And we can still look at the spiritual who's inside of us more than the physical. Hallelujah. Everything can fall down around us. But if you've got God in your life, you've got more than enough. He's more than enough for you and I to make it in these last days. More than enough for us to make it through the end. You see, if you'll go to the end of Job, you'll understand why Job held on. It's because he knew God. He had a relationship with God. He understood how God was and how God worked and how God loved him and how God loved mankind. And so, if you'll finish reading the, the, the book of Job, you'll understand and you'll see that Job was blessed more in the end than he was in the beginning. Job was blessed with more than he was in the beginning. He had a lot in the beginning. He had a great beginning. But in the end, it was greater. So let me tell you, hallelujah, you might feel alone today. You might feel that everything's falling apart today. But if you'll hold on to God, just like Job did, yes. the end is going to be better than the beginning. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. When, when this is all said and done, everything is over, and we reach heaven as our eternal home, we'll be able to, we'll be able to understand and realize the end was better than the beginning. Hallelujah. The end is going to be great, church, but we've got to hold on. We've got to keep Jesus Christ the Lord of our life. We've got to do His work. We've got to do His will. If we want to see heaven and we want to go to live with Jesus forevermore for eternity, we've got to let Jesus be Lord of our life every day. No matter what goes on, no matter what comes against us or who comes against us, we've got to represent God, church. We've got to be spiritual. We've got to think with spiritual mindsets, spiritual hearts, spiritual lives. We've got to be willing to let the physical rest, physical lay down, let the spiritual be what it takes. And let the spiritual be what it needs to be so we can continue going forward for God's glory. It's all about Him. Amen. It's all about Him. God's looking for some people to say, you know what? Even though all hell comes against me, I'm still going to represent God. I'm still going to be God's. I'm going to hold on. Hallelujah. It might feel like I am slipping away. It might feel like I'm holding on to that last thread of hope. But i got to hold on. You see, I've, I've been there before in my life. Feel like you're holding on to that last thread of hope. Everything falling down. The enemy attacking. Everything just going wrong. But then you remember. If you're holding on to that last thread of hope. God will reach way down and pick you up. And hold you. In his loving arms and encourage you and bless you and touch you in your life and allow you to be what you need to be. God loves each and every one of us tonight. God wants to help us and wants to bless us. Hallelujah. He wants to do a mighty work in our life. We're fixing to pray.